Well, they don't necessarily come when you think they would, and then there's some times that you have to be full, or it's just that it's pointless to do the scene. But um, it really, to me, it always comes down to the relationship with uh, the director, which is, by the way, oftentimes a daddy projection or a mommy projection if it's a female director anyway. So it's kind of like all of my unfulfilled needs are because of that prick, <laughs> you know, or whatever. And believe me, we're neurotic enough without like a big stress load. And um, and what did we do? I mean, we just talked and we became very close. And he revealed things to me about how he felt about, you know, when when your mom got sick and my mom was sick, or we thought about dads in general and how you want to connect with them and how honestly, if you if you seek to understand a little bit rather than to be understood, there's this kind of transformative thing happens. But the key word that we always use was uh, was salvation. It's easy to get emo when the key word for the film is your salvation. Yeah. Basically, it's basically also the salvation of my career in case in case I blew it. We just can we just not release the movie? No, no, no. Warner's is putting it out. So, David, can you expand a little bit on that? Were there scenes that you then elongated when he was in the right moment? Were there times when you said, okay, we're gonna go a bit, a bit longer here? We talked everything through and we really had like this amazing rehearsal process and it started with the day when we went through the whole movie together for like six hours and it was really a beautiful day. But what was interesting to me about your process and I try to always start as a director by listening, you know, you start by talking a lot towards the actors, you're convincing them to do the movie, or we talked for years creating the movie together. And so there's a lot of understanding going on already, but then once they start to do their thing, I always want to listen first and just see if it's landing on me. I try to be an audience member all the time. And you made two very sp specific decisions very early on that you were not going to cry in the boat when he complimented you at the end of the movie, which was a very ballsy decision because that's the moment you expect it to happen, and that you were gonna cry in the courtroom when you lost the case. And I thought that was almost a reversal of the expectation of the character, and it was certainly written differently. And I thought it was just such a mature, sophisticated choice, and my first instinct when I heard it was like, I had read the script differently, but I, I just kept it to myself. Or I'll talk him out of it on the day. <laughs> <laughs> But it's I, a no, lot of talking me out of it on I, the day. No, but I stuck with those. No, those were your. Those were brilliant decisions, and it was really. Um, yeah. I, think, I think you're the most mature actor I've ever worked with because, you know, look, I, I give this compliment to Robert all the time, which is that movie stars come and make dramatic movies or make a smaller film, or, you know, an acting movie again and they tear the wallpaper off the walls and they're overexerting and they're acting so hard and trying to show everybody that they can act. <laughs> and every single day as we would wrap the set, I was like waiting to see if that one of those moments was gonna happen, just as like your coach and collaborator to be like, you know, you gotta pull it back. And you had such a beautiful way of only being in the scene and just being in the scene and never pushing or forcing anything until it really happened. And that, I mean, I think you look at this performance, and again, you make everything, I know what hard work you put into this performance, but you make it seem effortless. It just feels like we're just with a guy. <laughs>